Hey guys, how's it going? Jonathan here in the US visiting family for one more week until I go back to the Philippines. Here today I wanted to make a video about what stands out to me as I'm back in the US after living eight years abroad in various countries. Real quick a little bit about where I've been for the last eight years. I have lived in Thailand, Vietnam, Nicaragua, Colombia, and Spain, as in had a house and a job in these places or an apartment. And from there, I've been able to travel around to all of the bordering countries, just over 40 countries over that span of time. So I'm going to be comparing the US to those areas. I don't want you to think that I'm not patriotic or that I hate my country. The point of this video is to talk about issues that I think should be talked about, the negative issues. But don't think I hate my country, I love my country. This is one of the main reasons I don't live in this country because the cost of living is so high. An example from the healthcare cost, I don't have health insurance in this country, so let me know in the comments section below what you pay for your health insurance in the US. From the last time I did research on this for myself, three, $400 a month for health insurance. And that's even before your deductible. Your deductible might be thousands of dollars, which is what you pay before your health insurance starts paying. You should do the research yourself, but the truth is Americans spend more on healthcare than any other country in the entire world by a significant margin. We spend roughly double that of the second country on the list. So I don't have health insurance in this country. So as a result, when I come here, sometimes I go to the doctor. I went to a specialist last time I was in town. The out-of-pocket cost was $210 just to meet with this specialist. We decided to do some blood work to check some levels. The nurse casually comes into the room. I don't need to go to a lab. She drew my blood. They said they'd send me the results. Didn't even mention a price. A couple weeks later, I get a bill in the mail from LabCorp for $330. That's $540 just for them to tell me I was fine, which is absolutely absurd. This isn't the case in other countries. Now, to be fair, if I were to have surgery, I would be happy to be in the United States for that surgery. I trust many of the doctors here. I know we have some of the world's best doctors here, but there are also very good doctors outside of the US as well. General cost of living, gas, for instance, I, I don't know what gas is here, but everybody is, is complaining about gas prices here in the US. Where I was in Thailand for a couple months, I, had, I drove a motorbike, a scooter. That's what I usually drive around Southeast Asia. I would fill up every couple weeks and it would cost maybe five, six, seven dollars to fill up the tank. Full? Full. Two hundred bucks. Yeah. Six dollars. Okay. And to be fair, I'm not driving super long distances every day, but I drove every single day to go to the market, to go to the gym, to go to the beach. Food. Here, with the twenty percent tip, it's not uncommon to spend thirty, forty dollars for a meal, a beer, and twenty percent tip. If you're in Southeast Asia, you're in Thailand, Vietnam, where I've been in the Philippines. If you're eating at a local place you're spending less than $10 to sit down at a restaurant and have a meal and have a drink. In Vietnam, you could have a meal for $2, $3. Same in, in Thailand, probably a dollar or two more. Philippines, if you go to these Karens where, where I've been eating recently, it's $1 per item. So you get chicken and then you get vegetables and then you get another side. And so when I, I left the US and I started traveling the world in these cheap countries, I saw the price difference and how much lower the cost of living is outside of the US and when the pace of life is so much lower in many of these other countries and the food is incredible, <laughs> what's, what's my incentive to, to move back here? I don't, I don't have much of one other than friends and family. If, if I didn't have friends and family here, I doubt that I would, have, I would have come back at all in the past eight years, if I'm honest. I make this video as I just had to drive to go get coffee. For the most part in this country, everything is so spread out, you have to have a car to get around. Public transportation is almost non-existent, especially in this area. There's no bus that's coming. And this also makes me think of a comment that someone left on my video here just last week on a video I posted when I said I was coming here. And it really resonated with me because of how accurate I think it is. And they said, in the US, everyone with their manicured lawns and their, their nice big houses full of stuff with their big screen TVs and their nice cars, yet they're lonely and isolated. 
And I think that's accurate for a lot of people in this country. It seems if people get money in this country, they buy land and they isolate themselves away from the rest of the world. You may fill your house full of stuff and nice things, but you don't have, for many people, that sense of community. Just last week, I was in Manila, Philippines, and you see this community, it seemed everyone knew each other. They'd come out and eat together, the kids would play together, they share drinks together, whatever it is. It, I, <laughs> I'm assuming all of these people know each other. And now this, I can't generalize the entire US based on this, but I think this is fairly common throughout the country for people to not know their neighbors. I'm here at my dad's house. I don't know, I don't know a single one of these neighbors, not a single person here. And that's, that's another thing that stands out to me here is the fact that this is a consumer nation. There's excess, excess of everything, excess of food, excess of clothes, toys. Not everyone, again, I can't generalize the entire country. There are, there are a lot of regions, a lot of areas in the US that are uh, in, in poverty, without a doubt. But, but also, you see a lot of, of excess. Again, coming from last week in Manila, if you watch this video, I'm playing this game with these kids and all we needed for this game was a flip-flop and a cup. These kids were as happy as could be. I had a blast playing with these kids. You don't need all of this, these expensive electronics and, and technology, which is why that was so refreshing to play those games with those kids where no, no one was looking at their phone. There was genuine happiness and smiling in that video. I would much rather have the community than the stuff, personally. And I think this would be true for, for many people. And we've all heard money doesn't buy happiness, this cliche saying. I think that, I think from some studies that I've seen that that statement's incomplete as long as all of your needs are met. As long as all of your needs are met, the studies have shown that excess income beyond what you need that doesn't buy happiness. And, and I believe that it actually it does the opposite. I think that many people will place more value on possessions and, and money than they do that sense of community and their friends and family. And so what ends up happening a lot, people will spend their extra hours working harder to earn more money and to pay for these expensive lifestyles instead of using those extra hours to spend with friends and family and at the gym taking care of their health. And, and as a result, you don't get a work-life balance. Now, this isn't everyone and it's not unique to the United States, but one thing that is unique to the United States is the way in which we eat as a result of this work culture. Only here in the US have I seen these fast food strips where you have a full standalone McDonald's next to a KFC, next to a Taco Bell. Across the street, you've got another row of fast food restaurants. Other countries, of course, have fast food restaurants, but not in the volume that I've seen here in the US. And each of these fast food restaurants has a drive through We don't even have time to go in and sit down and eat our meals. I remember talking about this exact thing with an Italian man when I was trekking in the Himalayas for seven days and <laughs> you have a lot of time to chat. I told him about this, how we eat in our car on the way to work, on the way to school, how, how many people eat at their desks because they're in such a hurry, they're in such a rush to, to get their work done. He couldn't believe what I was saying. He he laid stone, he, he built walls in a small village in Northern Italy. He told me his father would kill him if he didn't go home every day and eat with the family. He talked about how his relationship was so strong with his father because they had these meals together every day. And I, I know this depends on the household. Many, many households make it a point to have a family dinner. And that still, of course, happens here. But it seems from the sheer volume of these fast food restaurants and the cars in the lines, it seems all too common. Going back to excess, you see a lot of excess food here. And the US has is, is got a serious obesity problem if you look at the charts and the statistics of the, the countries, the US is near the top in, in terms of uh, obesity problems. And when I come back here, this is something that I am fully aware of because I find myself eating so much more when I'm here in the US. Not only are the portions so much bigger, the advertising and the marketing in this country is some of the best I've ever seen. You've got food and, and products and, and whatever it is, advertisements in your face constantly because it's it's always in your head on some subconscious level, you feel like you need that thing. Something I notice in this country, people eat when they're bored. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to gain weight while I'm here for, for 10 days. 
I find myself doing it without thinking. Whereas when I'm living outside the US, I never do that. I never eat out of boredom. So there's something going on here. I think maybe some addictive additives in the food or just the, the, the how everything is so readily available or the, the marketing and advertising. You've always got some food or some product or something being pushed on you and, and it works. It's a serious health issue. I wanna say that I'm extremely grateful to be from this country. It's an incredible country, but it has its problems. A lot of it has to do with uh, the media and that's another thing that stands out to me when i come back here is just the how divided the country is you see incessant bickering and fighting and division in in the country and it's a lot of it is driven by the media and the politics we've got a lot of people constantly watching these news stations and listening to news radio and just being being fed this <laughs> propaganda whatever it is that these news stations, I don't, I don't know their incentives or their motives, but it, it seems that they are intentionally trying to divide us and it works. They would love for you to get mad and get angry at the opposition. And it's just, it's incessant noise to me. And it's something that I, I want nothing to do with. Uh, you, you have to reach a point where you say, okay, me consuming this, all of this noise from the media and staying up to date and constantly following the news, how much of that is going to help? How can I help the situation? If that can help the situation, that's one thing. But I believe that for the most part, it doesn't. You consuming it is just going to make you angry and it's going to stress you out. And in no way does it help the situation for you to consume that content. So I, I personally choose to, to stay away from it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the safety here in the US. You compare it to Asia, again, I keep comparing it to Asia because that's where I'm currently living. And you look at Japan. I have a couple friends who live in Japan and they say five-year-old kids can walk to school on their own taking public transportation and no one worries about them. You would never send a five-year-old in a city to school alone in the United States, ever. There are dangerous parts of this country. But in, in general, I feel much safer in every country I've been to in Asia than I do here. You can't generalize the entire continent of Asia, but I have. Every country I've been to in Asia, I feel safer than I do here. It might sound like I'm trying to convince you to leave the US, I'm not at all. This is an incredible country and it's it's where I'm from. It's, it is home to me. I'm proud to be from the United States and I don't take it for granted. I'm. I'm fully aware of opportunities that exist in this country. I know how many people come to this country, move to this country for better pay and better job opportunities. And I don't take any of that for granted at all. But fortunately, we're in a time where we can develop online skills and live in cheaper countries while receiving higher pay from, from the internet. I'm a huge advocate for this, for YouTube. I, I try to convince all of my friends to start a YouTube channel because now this is my primary source of income, living abroad and living in cheaper countries. If you want to start a YouTube channel, this requires no degree whatsoever, no official training. It takes hard work. I, I spend well over 40 hours a week working on YouTube, without a doubt, but I love it. I'm passionate about it. It probably wouldn't be enough money to live in the United States, but I can live very comfortably in Southeast Asia. I know many of my subscribers are Filipinos who want to live in the Philippines. I see comments all the time saying they miss their home, they miss the Philippines, but they moved to the US or maybe another country for a job opportunity. And because we have the internet, maybe people can develop skills and stay in their home country. I don't know what you want to do with that information, <laughs> but it's true. Again, I'd like to make a positives video about the US as well, because there is so much to say about this country, so many great things to say about this country and the people in this country. But this was the negatives video that I, some issues that I thought should be talked about. Here, I'll put a couple other videos right here from the Philippines so you can check out where I live and what I've been doing and what life is like in the Philippines. So check out these videos next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.